everyone it's Affy and today I am here to do my July wrap up I read five books in July I barely tried so um, this will be a quick video or at least I'm assuming it will be a quick video um, but yeah didn't really <laughs> I didn't really get through many books in July. I don't even have an excuse. I think I'm just in a bit of a slump. Um, so we'll see. We'll see how August goes. I'm hoping I kind of snap out of it and read more books um, this month. But for July, I only read five. But um, yeah, I'm not going to talk too much. I'm just going to hop right in. So the first book I started off with in July was Chasing Cassandra. This is by Lisa Kleypas and this is part of the Ravenel series. I'm getting there. I'll be done soon with the series which makes me sad because I'm really enjoying it. Okay so in this book we have Tom Severin and Cassandra Ravenel and Cassandra is the twin sister of Pandora Ravenel. Um, she is very sweet and charming and kind of quiet in comparison to her sister. Um, she's the one that doesn't get in trouble. Cassandra is more centered and just kind of calm. Um, she's the calmer of the two. And um, Tom and Cassandra meet at Pandora and Gabriel St. Vincent's wedding. And um, this is kind of similar to the last book I read about Wes Ravenel and Phoebe. Um, they all meet each other at the wedding of um, Pandora and Gabriel. And so um, another book that starts off with those two's wedding. And he sees her at the wedding and is basically like, ooh, who is she? Um, and once he realizes that she is the cousin of his friend, because he's friends with West uh, Ravenel, he, um, he realizes he might not have a chance with her. He's a very cutthroat kind of um, do what you have to do to get what you want kind of person. And his friends don't like that about him. Um, West doesn't like that about him. And so he doesn't see him as a good option for Cassandra. But they dance with the, each other, I think, in the greenhouse at some point during the wedding. It's just the two of them, and they're dancing, and they have this beautiful moment. And he's like, I never want to forget this moment with you. Um, and then he decides he doesn't ever want to see her again because he doesn't like the way she makes him feel. Like, he's not used to feeling these type of emotions for anyone, and so he's just kind of, like, uncomfortable. Um, so he's like, it's been beautiful getting to know you in this moment, but we should not see each other again. Cut forward to a few months later, and he meets this little boy, um, and this little boy is very stinky and um, lives on the streets. He takes the little boy to um, see the doctor, Dr. Garrett Gibson, and Cassandra happens to be there visiting the doctor. She's um, meeting her for lunch, and so they bump into each other again, and he just kind of is like, ooh, those feelings, man, those feelings are coming back. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. Cassandra goes to a party with um, her cousins and she is um, being kind of pursued and courted by um, a guy and she sees this guy at the party and he kind of convinces her to go into a room with him. Really bad idea. He um, starts attempting things and she does get away from him but the next day she is basically in the news and he has slandered her name and made her seem like like a hussy she basically is ruined it's, it's then when Tom kind of shows up and is like okay I'm I'm here to save the day <laughs> so um, it's their story this was a good one I think I gave this one I gave this one four stars, so I didn't like it as much as some of the other books in the series just because it was a bit slow and there there wasn't as much time spent between the two of them. Like they don't they didn't spend as much time together, I feel like, as some of the other couples in the other books. Um, so that was kind of my one 
let down with this book. I just wanted them to spend more time together. He was like trying to avoid her the majority of the book. <laughs> she was like, dude, get over yourself. And Tom was um, a character I was looking forward to reading his book um, just because of the kind of person that he is. Um, I kind of wanted to get a sense of his mentality. Tom was definitely, I feel like he's very emotionally stunted. He likes to say that he has only five emotions and anything outside of those five emotions is too much for him. I think in a lot of ways it probably was love at first sight. He just like emotionally couldn't take it. She puts him through the ringer um, to marry her because she's like, no, I need to make sure that you understand that like I still want my freedom. Um, she's like her sister in that way. She doesn't want to be forced into a marriage and um, kind of pushed around. So the next book that I read in July is by Lorraine Heath. This is part of the Scoundrels of St. James series. This is Surrender to the Devil and this is the third book in the series and it's got a step back on the back there. I don't know if you can even see it with the lights but yeah. Um, so in this we have Sterling and then Franny Darling and Franny is actually from the first book in the series. Um, she is the girl that Luke um, loved as a child and had planned to marry originally. Franny Darling is um, called Franny Darling because um, everyone would just call her um, Franny my darling essentially like Franny darling and so she didn't know what her last name was so she just decided to go by Franny darling um, which I thought was both sweet and kind of sad. Franny is um, friends with the uh, they call them the lads um, so it's a group of boys and her and they all grew up um, as children on the streets of St. James and they were basically orphans they they lived on the streets they learned to steal um to survive and so these guys protect her they they love her she's you know they care for her when she meets sterling who's the brother of luke's wife from the first book um she meets him at the wedding of luke and his his wife and um He's immediately taken with her and she kind of takes a bit of an interest in him, but she's like, she does, doesn't really know how to feel because she's never had a guy interested in her in like, in like a sexual way. Like Luke had wanted to marry her, but he, he loved her in more of like a sisterly way. Whereas Sterling, like he's got like a thing for her, like he wants her and she's never had that before he starts trying to get her attention and when um the lads <laughs> the lads when they find out that he is interested in her they beat him up they're like you're not allowed to be around franny like leave her alone she's she's precious to us and we don't want anybody putting their hands on her and she's obviously pissed off she's like leave him alone like can i have a life please like <laughs> you know, you guys get to have love and I'm, I can't, like, what's going on? Just give me space to, like, have some love in my life. They kind of keep coming back and threatening him, but she, he, he won't back down because he, he really, he really likes her. Because he's a duke, um, he, he can't marry her. Technically, she's, it's a class difference. Um, she grew up on the streets and he's a duke. She basically would have to be his mistress. He's, Sterling is a sweetheart. He's a really, really sweet guy. He's a great A flirt. I gave this one four stars. Um, it was a bit slower than the first and second book, at least for me. Um, I, I like Sterling. I like Franny. I like them together. It just felt like there wasn't a ton going on in comparison to the other books. So the next book I read for July was by Sarah McLean. This is A Scott in the Dark. This is part of the Scandal and Scoundrel series. And this book was highly entertaining. 
This book was um, highly entertaining. <laughs> very, very entertaining. I, I really like this series so far. Um, the first book in the series I gave five stars. Um, I feel like that's the going theme with this series is just highly entertaining situations um, that the characters get themselves into. So in this book we have um, Alec, who's a duke, and then Lillian, who is his ward. Alec becomes Duke after 16 men die. So there are 16 men in the line for Duke and they all die within like a month span time. And so he's the 17th of all these Dukes and he's basically like, how the fuck did I end up here? He's just baffled by this entire situation. He becomes Duke and for three years, everything's going all right. And then he finds out that he has a ward three years in nobody told him and um obviously her name is Lillian and he finds out because she has gotten herself into a bit of scandal he basically runs to London to find out okay who is this girl and what has what has she gotten herself into and so he arrives and she is upset she doesn't want to have to deal with anyone um, she doesn't want anyone telling her how to manage the situation and she's upset at the fact that like he didn't even know she existed. She packs up her stuff and she leaves the house that she's staying at and goes to another one of the homes owned by the dukedom, I guess. There's, there's so many homes in this dukedom because all the 17 dukes had like a house that they owned and it's crazy. It's... The story is crazy. She she leaves and he eventually figures out which house she's at and goes and follows her. And he finds out that she basically had posed nude for a painting for this guy that she fell for. And this guy is going to be showing the painting um, at a museum and um, in two weeks time. And the only reason people know about it is because she herself, um, when the guy was talking about the photograph at the museum, she ran up and was basically like, you weren't supposed to show this to anybody. Um, this was supposed to be just between us. And people are like, oh, she must be the model in the picture. And so that in and of itself causes people to start talking and that's when her reputation starts to be ruined. Um, so people haven't even seen the painting yet, but they know that she's the one in the painting and so they're already, tongues are already wagging. He basically decides he's going to help her figure out a way to um, either get rid of this painting or make it so that it doesn't see the light of day. There's a, a guy that he's trying to get her to court because he, he wants her to get married before the, the painting is shown so that, you know, at least she's married and she's not in a situation where no one will marry her after the painting has come out. You kind of feel bad for Lillian because um, her parents died when she was, I think, a preteen. And so she's been a ward f for, I think like 10 years at this point. And she's never really had anyone pay attention to her. And that's part of why she kind of falls for this artist guy. Um, it's like somebody finally gave her attention. And so she just kind of fell for the wrong person like she gave this guy all her love and attention and he's a dick this dude was a dick I mean they called him a peacock because he literally is one of those people that like he dresses very flamboyantly and he walks around telling everyone about how wonderful he is and how he's going to be the next Michelangelo and they should just wait and see and um you know he was going to prove it to everyone that he was he was going to be the greatest artist since the dawn of time everybody's like what did you see in him Alec kind of has this low self-esteem and um, he he makes it very clear that he's not good enough for her. I really enjoyed this one. I ended up giving this one four stars. I didn't like it as much as the first book but still it was definitely a lot of fun. So um, the fourth book that I read in July is Baron. This is part of the Knickerbocker Club. This is by Joanna Shoup. 
and this book is about William and Ava and Ava is a spiritual medium and um, she <laughs> spiritual medium um, she is a fraud obviously she's not a real spiritual medium but she goes by the name of Madame Zolikoff um, and she puts on this German accent and she has been um, seeing a guy who is a uh, running for uh, political office. Will is basically his running mate um, and this guy sees her every week. He's very um, dedicated and just like a dedicated follower of hers where he believes everything she says. Like if she reads tea leaves, he believes what she says about the tea leaves. Will is basically like, all right, this is gonna look bad if we um, start running for office and people find out that, you know, my running mate is believes in spiritual mediums, like it's gonna look bad on us, people aren't gonna take us seriously. And so he goes to her show and he basically approaches her and is like, I need you to <laughs> stop seeing my running mate. Um, you're you're gonna make us look bad when we run um, for the primaries and like, can you just leave him alone, stop talking to him, just don't work with him anymore. Give him some reason why you can't work with him anymore. She's like, absolutely not. If he wants to keep seeing me, he's gonna keep seeing me. Like, I'm gonna do my job. And if you want him to stop seeing me, tell him yourself to stop seeing me. He starts to kind of find her to be interesting. Um, he eventually invites her to his rally. After the rally, they start to spend a bit more time together than they probably should. And it turns into an affair and things get very interesting. He he really put her in a situation where she, she almost lost her livelihood. Um, she has two or three siblings, actually. She's the eldest of uh, four, four siblings and she's trying to take care of her family and this is the only thing that's made her enough money to be able to take care of her family. All of them work um, anyways, but she's trying to make sure that they have a roof over their head and at least, you know, some food in their stomachs. And she found that this is a good way to make money. And he's constantly trying to get in her way. And she's like, you're going to take this away from me. This is my livelihood. Like, what else am I supposed to do? And he's like, you could find a job. And she's like, you don't understand what jobs out here are like. You have money. Like you, you don't have to worry about that sort of thing. His political advisor um, finds out about them. And this guy is a piece of shit. He basically tries everything he can to get them um, to separate them and make it so that they're not seeing one another anymore and he goes to some extreme lengths to convince her um, to break up with Will. I did enjoy this one. I ended up giving it four stars. Um, it was definitely very fun, very interesting. Um, there was some moments where I was very worried about her especially. Um, and how she was going to get out of the situations that she was in. Um, but still a fun one. I, I've enjoyed this series so far. I think I've given all the books four stars. Um, I don't think I've given any of them five st Yeah, I've given all the books in the series four stars. Um, so pretty solid series. Not like the greatest, but a pretty solid series. The last book that I read in July is by Loretta Chase. This is Silk is for Seduction. And um, this book was a lot of fun. We've got Marceline and the Duke of Clevedon. And I don't know what his actual name is because they just call him Clevedon the entire book. So Clevedon. <laughs> We've got Marceline and Clevedon, and Marceline is a dressmaker, and she calls herself the greatest dressmaker in the world. She is very, very adamant about that. She knows who she is, and she is very confident. She decides that she is going to meet with him and convince him to let her dress his 
soon to be fiance. So he is supposed to marry this girl that he's known his entire life. And um, she is like, if you're going to marry this girl, she's going to become the duchess. And I would love to have a duchess um, as a client of mine because it would bring in more customers. So she actually goes all the way to Paris to see him. And at first he's just taken by her. He's like, oh my God, this woman is so gorgeous. He's so intrigued by her. And then when she tells him why she's there, he's like, really? You're just here for my money, essentially. And she's like, well, yeah, I mean, if you put it that way, sure, I'm, I'm here for your money. <laughs> Marceline is a very interesting character. She has no scruples whatsoever. Like, she is very honest. Um, she does not hold back. And she, she, yeah, she's just, she's very confident. She's very, very um, adamant about her work. And she's very dedicated to her work. And so they decide they're going to play a game of cards. And she's like, um, trying to get into this party. It's like the biggest, most lavish party in all of Paris. And um, she's like, I'm going to get into that party. And he's like, No, you're not you don't have, you're not you're not high enough in the echelon of society to get into there. And she's like, Oh, I'm gonna find a way. And he's like, How about this? Let's play a uh, game of cards. And if you, if you win, I will take you to that party because I'm I am invited and uh, I don't remember what it was if if she lost but um, she wins and so he takes her and she wears one of her gowns that she's um, designed and everybody at the ball is just enthralled with her I love that word enthralled um, but everyone at the ball is just looking at her like all the men are like salivating and all the women are just like googly eyed at her dress and um <laughs> so she she kind of looks back at him like told you i was the best dressmaker in the world so they get back to london and things get interesting from there he just follows her around like a little puppy um he keeps showing up at her store and trying to talk to her she's got a daughter and he like brings toys around for her daughter her daughter is hilarious by the way her daughter is so cute this little girl is the funniest little girl um but he he just can't stay away from her um and she's like you're supposed to go and get engaged to somebody like why do you keep showing up at my store so this one was good i ended up giving this one five stars i really really enjoyed this one um marceline is like i said she's a tough cookie and she's dedicated to her work she does not play when it comes to her job like she loves making dresses she loves what she does and she yeah she's she's a tough cookie all the women in her family are this is um a series and she's got two sisters which is uh the other two books are about her two sisters i just i i think the reason i love this book so much is because of marceline like she's just such an interesting character i i really really enjoyed this book like i had such a good time with it and um that's why i gave it five stars if you have made it to the end of this video uh leave me a candle emoji and leave me some comments in the comment section have you read any of these books if you have what did you think of them um, is there anything that you are currently reading that you are in love with? Just leave me some comments and I will talk to you and see you in the next video. Bye.